Breaking news that's sending shockwaves through the global defense world, Iran has finally done what many said was impossible. After decades of sanctions and isolation, Tehran has built its very own fighter jet, designed and engineered on home soil. But how did a country cut off from the world's military market manage this? Tonight, we uncover the secret story behind Iran's rise to aerospace independence, from reverse engineering old jets to unveiling a symbol of national pride. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we explore one of the most unexpected stories in modern military history, how Iran, long restricted by sanctions, built its own fighter jet. For over 40 years, Tehran's Air Force struggled to maintain aging aircraft inherited from the pre-revolution era. Spare parts were scarce, suppliers were blocked, and global embargoes aimed to ground Iran permanently. But behind closed hangars, a silent revolution began. Iranian engineers refused to let their skies go dark. They reverse-engineered components, trained domestic scientists, and began experimenting with indigenous avionics. Slowly, the dream of independence took flight. The goal was not to rival superpowers, but to prove self-sufficiency under pressure. Every challenge, political or technical, became motivation. What the world saw as limits, Iran saw as opportunity. Out of adversity grew a new vision, to design and fly a jet made entirely by Iranian hands. This wasn't just a project, it became a national mission to reclaim control of the skies and send a message that technology, once denied, could still be achieved through determination and unity. For Iran, innovation wasn't a choice, it was survival. Since 1979, a wave of international sanctions targeted its defense industry, cutting off access to modern jets and spare parts. America's embargo grounded Iran's once powerful fleet F Force FFS and F 14s. Each grounded jet symbolized dependency, each missing part a reminder of isolation. But necessity forged creativity. Iranian engineers began dismantling what they had left, studying each component down to the smallest screw. In secret workshops, they rebuilt engines, redesigned circuits, and learned to manufacture vital parts domestically. This struggle created a new generation of engineers, not trained in comfort but in crisis. Over time, small victories added up. By the late 1990s, Aron could maintain its entire fleet without foreign help, an achievement that stunned outside analysts. The sanctions designed to cripple Iran's air power instead fueled a movement towards self-reliance. While other nations imported solutions, Iran built them from scratch. The constant blockade became a university of innovation, teaching resilience, adaptation, and independence. Every embargo that came next only pushed Tehran further toward technological sovereignty. In the story of Iran's aircraft industry, the world's restrictions didn't clip its wings. They taught it how to fly higher on its own. Iran's aerospace journey truly began with one aircraft, the American F-5 Tiger II. After the revolution, dozens of these jets remained in Iran's arsenal, but no spare parts could be purchased. So Iranian engineers did the unthinkable. They reverse engineered the F-5 from the ground up. What began as a repair effort turned into a research revolution. Piece by piece, Iran learned how to replicate the airframe, electrical systems, and jet engines. The result was the Azeroksh, Iran's first domestically assembled fighter, followed by the SAG, a twin-tail variant inspired by American designs, but upgraded with local improvements. Each model represented progress, not just in metal, but in mindset. Reverse engineering became the foundation of Iran's modern aerospace identity. It allowed Terran to master technologies once considered unreachable. Engineers introduced their own radar systems, flight computers, and digital cockpits, gradually transforming copies into unique creations. What the world dismissed as imitation evolved into innovation. The SAG may have started as a replica, but it ended as a declaration that Iran's engineers could innovate under isolation. Reverse engineering was never about copying, it was about survival, learning, and eventually leading. Through patience and persistence, Aaron taught itself to rebuild the sky one bolt at a time. In August 2018, Iran unveiled the Khauser fighter jet, a moment that made headlines across the world. Broadcast live from Tehran, the event marked Iran's arrival as a nation capable of producing its own advanced aircraft. Critics called it a modified F-5, but Iranian officials insisted that the Khauser represented a new generation of homegrown technology. It featured digital avionics, radar systems, and an entirely domestic flight control computer. President Hassan Rouhani stood proudly beside the aircraft, declaring that Iran had joined the ranks of self-sufficient nations. For many Iranians, it wasn't just about military might, it was about national pride. After decades of sanctions and skepticism, the Khauzar became a flying symbol of resistance. It showed that even under economic siege, Iran could still build, innovate, and progress. Western analysts debated its combat performance, but few could ignore the statement it made. The Khauzar wasn't meant to dominate skies, it was meant to prove that isolation could not ground ambition. Each rivet, each system, each flight hour was a victory against dependency. In that moment, Iran didn't just launch a jet. It launched a message determination can defy even the heaviest embargo. 
Behind the Couser's sleek frame lies a story of engineering persistence. Its cockpit features modern digital displays, replacing analog dials with multifunctional screens designed by the Iran Electronics Industries. Domestic radar systems allow for short range target detection and basic missile guidance, while its fly by wire controls demonstrate Iran's progress in aviation software. But perhaps its greatest achievement is the AUJ engine, an indigenous copy of the American J 85 turbojet recreated entirely in Iran. Developing turbine technology under sanctions required years of metallurgical research, testing alloys, and perfecting combustion efficiency. While its thrust and performance remain modest, the real success lies in independence. Iran's engineers now possess the capability to produce and maintain jet engines locally, a milestone few sanctioned nations ever reach. The Kauser serves as both aircraft and classroom, teaching Iran how to merge science with sovereignty. Every system represents a step toward mastery, from hydraulics to navigation, from radar calibration to software encryption. Though it may not rival cutting edge Western fighters, the Kauser's core achievement is symbolic. It proves that with enough patience, knowledge, and courage, even isolation can give birth to innovation. In Iran's defense history, technology became not just a tool of war, but a weapon of resilience. Behind every aircraft stands an army of thinkers, not soldiers. Iran understood this early. To build a jet, you must first build the minds capable of imagining it. That's why, from the late 1980s onward, Tehran invested heavily in aerospace education. Universities such as Sharif University of Technology and Malik Ashtar University of Defense Technology became innovation hubs. Thousands of students studied propulsion, aerodynamics, and control systems using simulation labs built under defense oversight. Iran didn't just train pilots, it trained engineers, scientists, and designers capable of leading complex research projects. Every flight test became a classroom, and every failure an engineering lesson. Over decades, a new generation emerged, one fluent in both technology and resilience. These young engineers formed the backbone of Iran's aerospace independence. They created design bureaus, worked with the Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Company, and refined homegrown avionics. Education became the quiet engine behind every success. While outsiders mocked Iran's ambitions, these classrooms wrote the blueprint for progress. The real secret of Iran's aerospace rise isn't hidden in hangars, it's hidden in universities, in lecture halls where students dare to believe their nation could defy gravity on its own terms. That belief built more than planes, it built purpose. Iran's homegrown fighter jets serve more than just military pride, they're a statement of sovereignty. In a world where imported technology can be withheld overnight, independence equals survival. The Khazar and Seg may not compete with Western stealth aircraft, but they grant Iran control over its skies without foreign dependency. Strategically, these aircraft fulfill multiple purposes. They train pilots, sustain industrial expertise, and act as test beds for drones, missiles, and avionics systems. This ecosystem ensures that Iran's defense remains adaptable. Even under pressure, every flight reinforces deterrence, signaling that Iran can sustain warfare logistics without external aid. Domestically, it fuels national confidence. Internationally, it sends a message Tehran's technological sovereignty cannot be reversed. Even if sanctions intensify, production can continue because every process, from metallurgy to radar software, now resides within Iran's borders. This self-reliance strategy mirrors Iran's broader geopolitical vision eye, standing firm in a world of alliances and embargoes. Building jets isn't only about fighting wars, it's about proving endurance. In the chessboard of Middle Eastern power, autonomy is the ultimate checkmate. The Khazar may fly locally, but its echo resonates globally, reminding rivals that control of the sky begins with control of one's own technology. Criticism came swiftly after the Khazar's debut. Western analysts dismissed it as a repainted relic, claiming Iran exaggerated its capabilities. Some experts argued it offered no real advancement beyond 1970s designs. Yet, these critiques overlooked the true context. Iran never claimed to build a fifth-generation stealth jet. Its mission was self-reliance under isolation. When a nation builds a fully operational aircraft without access to foreign suppliers, it achieves something extraordinary. Every rivet, circuit, and code line represents innovation born in constraint. What critics see as imitation, Iranians view as independence. The aircraft's performance may not match modern Western fighters, but its creation reshaped the nation's technological destiny. It proved that embargoes can limit trade but not determination. Even foreign analysts later admitted Iran's achievements reflected remarkable engineering under pressure. The Khazar became a symbol of narrative warfare, proof that perception can be as powerful as firepower. In Iran's story, critics play their part too, amplifying its message by questioning it. Every doubt fuels national resolve. In the end, whether loved or laughed at, the Khazar achieved its mission. It made the world look up and pay attention to Iranian skies once again. 
Iran's aircraft development did more than inspire its own people. It changed regional calculations. Neighboring states like Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the UAE began expanding their domestic defense programs in response, realizing the value of indigenous capability. Across Latin America and Asia, nations under sanctions or pressure looked at Tehran's model of technological defiance. The message was clear innovation doesn't belong exclusively to the powerful. Iran's journey showed that determination can substitute for dollars. Globally, defense analysts evaluated the impact of sanctions. Rather than paralyzing development, restrictions often accelerate it. The Khauser became a case study in creative resilience, a reminder that national ambition can overcome global isolation. While the aircraft itself may not shift the balance of military power, its symbolism reshaped geopolitics. Iran's program forced rivals to respect its persistence and inspired allies to pursue autonomy. Even Western think tanks acknowledge that Iran has institutionalized innovation under pressure. In the long run, the Khauser did more than fly. It inspired a movement. It told every sanctioned nation that the sky is still open to those willing to build their own wings, no matter how strong the headwinds. Iran's fighter jet program is only the opening chapter. Officials now speak of future generations featuring stealth shaping, composite materials, and advanced radar systems. Projects like the Chi RF 313 may still face skepticism, but they represent ambition, the willingness to dream beyond constraints. Alongside jets, Iran is heavily investing in drones, electronic warfare, and satellite technology, seeking to merge these systems into one cohesive defense network. The next step is integration, connecting manned and unmanned systems under AI-assisted command. Beyond hardware, the future lies in self-sustaining industries, exporting knowledge rather than weapons. Each achievement feeds the next. Better engines lead to better missiles, improved avionics enhance surveillance, software development strengthens cyber defense. This synergy defines Iran's future strategy, innovation born from necessity, sustained by education, and driven by pride. Whether or not Iran's next fighter rivals the world's best, its message remains constant independence is the ultimate power. From reverse engineering a relic to designing a dream, Iran's aerospace story is no longer about isolation. It's about evolution. Against every obstacle, Iran proved one thing. When determination takes flight, even gravity must step aside. If you enjoyed this cinematic deep dive, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more real world analysis, blending geopolitics, defense, and technology. Tell us in the comments, do you think Iran's aerospace program will ever rival global powers, or is it more about national pride than performance? Your thoughts drive our next episode. See you in the skies of analysis next time.